This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so today we are going to talk about Today we are going to talk about web application basics. So in the last class we uh, we discussed um, we discussed about what is a web application. I mean, what is a public IP and what is a private IP and how exactly your browser would be fetching a web page from Google.com, right? When you browse for Google.com on your browser. How would it connect? Yeah, uh, who joined just now? Uh, I cannot see your name. Right. Um, so uh, in the last class, we discussed about uh, basics of web application. We we talked about what is a private IP and what is a public IP. And you need a public IP if you want to connect through the internet. Your AWS machine is one machine that has a public IP, and Google.com web server definitely has a public IP, and that is the IP your browser connects to. When you try to browse for google.com or when you try to browse for facebook.com your browser connects to the facebook.com web server on the public ip and then it will get back the facebook.com web page so that is the way how the browser works right so now i'm going to talk about talk a little bit about what is a web application right what is a web application and how you can run a web application inside your AWS machine and what are the different components of a web application so let us take a quick look on that so uh, before that let me quickly demonstrate uh, google.com right think about think about the google.com website so in my browser address bar i browsed for google.com and what my browser did is it connected to some server on the internet the google.com web server and then it downloaded the web page now i can see the google.com web page displayed on my browser i can search for something and i can get the search result right and now the most important part that i want to discuss is i mean what are the different things you can find on the google.com website there is an image and the image is placed in the right place in the center not exactly on the top but below the top google logo is placed over here below that i have the google search button i can search for something over here and under below there is a search button and there is a i am feeling lucky button and there are options for changing the language i can log in and log out from google right there are different different options available and what i see once i can you mute Shrikan? Okay, thank you. Uh, once you browse for uh, google.com, uh, what you see is a stylish website, a website that looks very much coordinated. And the browser print the website in a formal coordinated way because it recognizes the HTML files Right. Every websites are written in HTML. Uh, the style I'm talking about, I mean, the format, how they have written, it is written in HTML. And that is one language that browser will understand. So browser get the HTML files from the Google web server and it will display that file in a proper manner in it. All right. And, and also it is not just about HTML file there is image and in order to style everything properly there are some style sheets or css files 
and then most importantly there would be a lot of programs that get executed if i click on some button for example i choose my language as hindi if i click on this button hindi then what's going to happen is uh, my browser will send a request to the google.com server which will run some program and as a result of the program a web page in hindi get displayed on my browser or i choose any of this language you know it would automatically convert to that particular language and that language would start displaying on my browser so what i'm trying to say is there are different different components of a web application there are images there are html files there are styling uh, style style sheets is what we call them and then there are different different programs which get executed if i click on some of these buttons you know some programs get executed so a web application is combination of all these things and then uh, all right so let me let me talk about a sample web application what are the different components of a sample web application so a sample web application that you want to run on your aws machine this is your aws machine right so on this machine now you want to run a web application so let's assume what are the different components of a web application definitely it contains html files it contains images you know images photos or whatever that uh, that are included inside the web page then it would contain style sheets you know these are all called static content of the website right these are called static content of the website and then there would be different different programs which would generate dynamic content of the website for example you type in something in the google search box and then click on enter what happens is your browser would send a request to the server running this web application and the server will execute some program then it will take the keyword that the user entered in the browser it will run some algorithm and finally it will get the search result and search result would be given back to the browser so uh, lots of program execution takes place in the meantime so so there would be lots of programs definitely a lots of program wrought by developers of the google company and these programs get executed when you do try to do something on your browser the remote server would execute these programs for you and every programs will have dependencies i will tell you what is dependency so nowadays developers don't write everything themselves right now there are lots of resources available on the internet so some program they write it themselves and some program they will get it from the internet they will download the programs from the internet they are free programs and they will use those programs within your application it is quite possible and it is completely okay and that is what today uh, you know most of the developers will do they have this flexibility of finding out some existing module that is already written get them and use them rather than writing everything themselves so such kind of external programs are called dependencies so every web application or i mean i'm not just talking about web application any software in the world is developed in this way developer would write the programs and uh, there would be lots of dependencies and all the dependency would be downloaded and they keep everything together and it would also contain the static content such as html images and style sheets these are mainly for web applications but you know sometimes the normal there are other software which need look and feel right microsoft word it is not a web application microsoft word is a software that you install on your laptop but that also has a proper style and everything 
so design is a important thing that everyone do while creating a software they design the software properly even google.com can be designed or any websites can be designed using different different uh, html images and style sheets so one web application would contain all these things in simple words if you if you are a developer of the google company you ask for the code of google i mean assume you are working in that code if you you get a folder you would find programs in it it may be written in php programming language or it could be in java or it could be in python or go right in some programming language you would find lots of programs one program that would get the keyword and run the google search another program for changing the language to hindi another program that will change the language to english so like that there would be different different programs not all programs are directly wrought by the developers of google some of them are dependencies that are directly downloaded from the internet and then you will find html files css files and different different images so these many things you will find in most of the web applications any web application forget about google for facebook or for your company have a web application that will also contain all these components these are the different components of a web application so i will tell you what my plan is i'm going to get such a web application i'm not going to develop one myself it's a big deal i'm going to get a sample web application from the internet a free web application there are many web applications that are free so it it will look like a beautiful website right i mean you will get the code you will get program dependencies html images style sheets everything and all those components you are going to put it inside uh, your server and then this you will make this web application ready to be served to the people right anyone in the world from their browser they browse for uh, your aws machines public ip their browser will connect to your aws machines public ip and your aws machine will be configured to respond to the browser with this web application just like google.com so this is a web application that is similar to google.com right and our plan is to serve this web application to the people and my plan is to download this web application from the internet there are some free web applications available out there on the internet i will download one of them and i will put them inside my aws machine and then i will serve this web application to the people all over the world that is the plan for today got it all right so give me a second All right, so the next thing, I'm going to download a sample web application. I'm going to download a sample web application called Vectors. Vectors is a similar web application you know you don't have to develop html images style sheets program or dependencies you know you can just download it as a package and then you can put it inside your aws machine so vectors is a free web application framework that anyone in the world can download and use it does not cost you it is absolutely free 
that's what i'm doing wet press i'm going to download wet press first of all let me log into my aws machine The machine is in stop state. I'm going to start it. Okay, the same machine what I am using yesterday, I am uh, continue, going to continue to use it. So I have this machine in my AWS account and it is time to uh, log into this machine and download WordPress inside this machine. WordPress is a web application framework that you can download for free and use for free. Run a website using that. It's anyone in the world can do it's absolutely free so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to log into the machine i have the public ip of the machine let me ssh to this machine oops one second So I'm going to SSH into this machine and right, the machine is up and running. And uh, now I'm going to download WordPress into this machine. WordPress is a web application that you can download. So how do you download something into a Linux machine? Any idea on that? So you have to use a command. There is no graphical interface, right? You have to use a command. The command is wget and then you specify the download url from which url you want to download so i want to get the url so to do that uh, let me go to let me go to the wordpress website you can search in google download wordpress something like this you can search in google it will take you to the wordpress website the correct website you can go there and you can uh, click this button download and install and then again click this button download tar.g set file and then it would start downloading but wait it is not my laptop i want it to be downloaded it is the aws machine where i want to download it so i just cancel the download right it's not my laptop where i want the file to be downloaded so i right click and i copy the link address from my laptop browser from the downloads page i got the link by right clicking and copying the link address so this is the download url i got the download url or you can directly get it from here from the address website you can right click and copy the link address you need this url and you need to tell the wget command this url and it will start downloading and that's what i'm doing That's what I'm doing. I'm going to run the command wget space, then the URL, then it will start downloading. So it downloaded the vectors and it is in a compressed format. It is in tar.g set format. What is the command to extract this file? You can use this command. XBF you might have learned. I'm also using Z option because it is a GZIP compression as well, along with tar. It also do a GZIP compression, different types of two compression in one file. So this is the command you always use every time you want to extract a tar.gz file. 
Cardioid GZ is a very common compression type in Linux, right? And this is the command always that you use you, when you want to extract such a file. So this is a compressed file and this is the command I am running on my Linux machine to extract it. So it is getting extracted. Now you type the ls command, you can see the extracted folder WordPress, the folder got extracted. Now let me go inside the WordPress folder and type the ls command. And now you will be able to see the complete web application files. There are programs, all those files that end with .php. Those are PHP programs. I told you every web application would contain programs, dependencies, HTMLs, style sheets, then uh, images, etc. Right? So uh, WordPress is one similar application that we just downloaded to your AWS machine. So it contains programs. And if you go in, take a look at inside this particular folder, you would find more PHP programs. These are the dependencies. Generally, I told you uh, one web application would contain program and the dependencies. And these are the programs brought by the developers of WordPress. And probably these are the programs that they either they wrote or they downloaded from internet as a dependency, right? That is the syntax of every web application. We will get into this architecture in detail in, in our advanced classes, not right now. For now, you understand every web application has programs, dependencies, and static files. Static files can be found in this particular folder, the images that would print on the website, then uh, you know the HTML, CSS, the styling components, right? That's what we call them static website. You would be able to find the static websites inside this particular folder. So uh, WordPress has everything, so you don't have to worry about anything, right? You don't have to worry about creating anything yourself. WordPress has everything that a web application need. All you need to do is serve this web application to the people all over the world using your AWS machine. And that is exactly what my intention is. What I am trying to do here is that now I downloaded this web application in my AWS machine. In my AWS machine, I kept it inside the folder a slash root slash WordPress. That is where I extracted the WordPress web application. It has HTML, it has images, style sheets, program dependencies, everything together I downloaded and I kept it inside this machine. Perfect. Now, what I have to do is, so this is my web application, which I already downloaded in the machine. And now I need to worry about something else. Actually, let's let's talk about, so uh, this web application right here, right? It may have some data that it want to store somewhere. What is mean by data? What is mean by data? Any idea on that? Collection of information. Uh, right. Uh, so, uh, uh, in a uh, yeah, anyone else? Collection of data. That is that is correct. Collection of information. So, uh, think about a company like Google. What would be their data? Or think about Flipkart company or Amazon company. What would be their data? So uh, I'll explain what data is, right? Data is basically what you gather in your business, right? You can say it's the business data. So every website will be collecting a lot of data from the users. You go to flipkart.com website and you sign up there. You are entering your first name, last name, email ID, phone number, credit card number, shipping address, billing address. So Flipkart should store all this data, right? I mean, it is their responsibility that 
they will maintain your data, maintain your username and password so that every time you try to log in, only you can log in, right? Somebody else tried your username and a wrong password, they should not be able to log in. And then Flipkart want to sell a lot of product, right? And or Amazon, uh, they want to sell a lot of product on their retail store. So when they want to sell some product, they want and every product has a seller and every seller has a phone number, email ID and company name information. Then uh, different, different product, every product has a name, every product has a description and then every product has a price right and there are different different uh, there are images for each product so there are a lot of data that flipkart want to keep not flipkart google or amazon any company they want to keep a lot of data and this web application work with that data so assume this is this is the flipkart now assume this machine for uh, for next two minutes. Assume this machine is the Flipkart web server. So this Flipkart web server machine, how the web application, you know, different different program running in it, they will continuously collaborate with a database, right? There there is a database. Sorry. There is a database that that this web application is continuously interacting with. So all the customer data are stored here, all the product data are stored here, and right, right in this database, everything is stored. Uh, the customer data your data and product data seller data order data history of orders everything are stored inside this particular database and web application continuously interact with the database read some data and write some data continuously that's what web applications will do it will read from it it will write into it for example a new customer sign up at the flipkart.com website you enter your email ID, password, then phone number, uh, shipping address, billing address, everything on your browser. And then you click on the uh, submit form. Then the browser would send all this data to the server. It would send all the data to the server. And what server does is it will collect all those details that you entered in the browser. And then it will store that data inside the database some program will get executed and as a result of this program all the customer data gets stored inside the database or you try to create a shopping cart on your browser right that guy who is browsing now he want to create a shopping cart on uh, uh, himself so he tried to click on some product item then he added the item to the shopping cart then what will happen the browser would send a request to the server you know a request uh, with uh, to create shopping cart with the selected products so some program get executed what this particular program does is it will take those product that the customer has selected then it will connect to the database and check inside the database what is that product what is the name of the product what is the description about that product what are the different images of the product it will fetch all the data from the database and then finally it will print uh, the uh, product and the description and everything inside the customer shopping cart so your web application continuously interact to a database store data or read data that's what web applications will continuously do not web applications maybe every software want a place where they want to store the data it is called a database we call it a database it is inside a database that you store data so yes our vectors is not different so now just assume this is your aws machine again right the machine right here 
now this is your aws machine and this is your vectors that you downloaded and vectors will have some data that it want to store inside a database right and uh, it want to write into this database and it want to read from this database so uh, you want to create a database like this and then vectors want to connect to that database so that is exactly what i am going to do i'm going to create a database okay cool so in order to create this database that vectors want to connect to i want some software right i mean database are nowadays managed as a software there are different different database technologies available there is ms sql mysql oracle database so there are different different database technologies available i will give a brief list of what are the different type of database that can be created you know there is oracle database there is ms sql then there is mysql there are different different softwares available in order to create and manage a database so wordpress uses a mysql soft uh, database mysql is one of the very popular uh, free uh, database engine that anyone in the world can install on their laptop or into your aws machine and then once you install mysql it will allow you to create databases or you can then create tables inside the database you can insert data inside the tables right it generally these things are not done by you you will create this database after installing mysql and then you will tell wordpress and wordpress would be writing the data inside the database or reading the data from the database uh, that is not probably your responsibility it is the programs that will continuously communicate to database and uh, get data and read data or write data your responsibility is to create a database and then give it to the web trust to write and read that's what you do you have a web application you then you create a database yourself and then give this database to the web application ask the web application to connect to the database and the rest of the things web applications will do adding data reading data writing data everything web applications will do so what i am going to do next is i'm going to install mysql on my aws machine actually i can either use the same aws machine or i can create a new machine you can it is not mandatory that wordpress and database should reside on the same machine it is not mandatory you can keep database on a different machine and wordpress on a different machine that is the best practice also but in our case we don't need that i would install my sql on the same aws machine and i will create the database in the same machine then i will allow wordpress to connect to this database and do whatever it want to do so let me go ahead and create a database so that is exactly what i am going to do in this aws machine in this aws machine i'm going to install mysql and then i will create a database inside that machine that is the plan for today so let us do that so let me go to this aws machine and let me install mysql first i got disconnected one second
Okay, uh, sorry about that. I have some kind of connection problem that is breaking my AWS connection. All right, so now I am inside my AWS machine and now it is time to create a database. Uh, first thing, first thing first, uh, I want to install my SQL. And uh, how do you install my SQL in Ubuntu? In an Ubuntu operating system, how you will install my SQL? What are the steps? So the first thing what I will do is go ahead. Uh, using apt get command. Yes, exactly. So in order to install my SQL, what I am going to do is I am going to find out what is the package that for my SQL by searching in Google. And then I would use apt get to do the job. So let me search in Google. Search in Google for something like this. MySQL Ubuntu package, right? I, I search in Google. I want to know what is the exact package that I need to install. The package name is MySQL server. This is the package I need to install. So I go back to my machine and I run this command. I run apt get update first to make sure that my apt get is up to date. And then I will run the command apt get install apt get install space my SQL server. That is the command for installing my SQL. Right. So now let me run the command apt get install. This is the command for installing my SQL server. All right, so if you get this error, just wait for some time and run it again. Yeah, so now now what happens is it, it is telling me these are different different packages that are going to get installed. And do you want to continue? Yes, I want to continue. And then what happens is my SQL will get installed on my on my AWS machine. And once my SQL is installed on your AWS machine, the next job that you want to do is you want to create a MySQL database. The software is ready. It is time to create a database. And then uh, you would also create a user and password for enhanced security. The people only who have the username and password can connect to database. So that is also another step that I would want to do. So after you install MySQL successfully, execute this command MySQL. Just run the command MySQL on the prompt. You get connected to the SQL prompt, and you know there are different different SQL queries that you can execute here. You know if you want to create a database, there is one query. You want to see the list of databases, there is another query. You want to connect to a database and see all the tables in the database. There are other queries for that. So you want to insert some data into the table. There is a table with the name order and into that table you want to insert a order history or there is a customer table into the customer table. You want to insert the customer data first name last name email ID phone number. So you want to insert something into the table. There is one query you want to read the data from the table. There is a select query. So like that there are different different queries available on SQL I'm not getting much into that uh, you know what i am going to do is i'm going to create a database in my sql and then i will also create a user and password for enhanced security so that people who have this username and password can connect to the database where even wordpress when wordpress want to connect to database wordpress must be using a username and password to connect to it right so first of all let me create a mysql database so show databases is a command once you executed it you would be able to see 
the list of databases that are currently available. If you want to create a new database, there is a query called create database, then you specify the name of the database that you create. So every database will have a name. I want to name my database WPDB. So that's why I put the name like that. So database is created. This is the SQL query to create a new database. And now it is time, right? I want anyone who want to connect to the database, read some data and write some data. First of all, they need to authenticate with a uh, proper username and password. That is my next intention. So what I will do is I will create a user and password and then that user and password will be given all the permission to this database and in future anyone including WordPress want to connect to this database they must have the username and the password got it so that's what I'm doing I'm going to create a database I created the database I'm going to create a user and password the I will execute the query the query is create user then you can specify the name of the user let's say WP user it's up to you you can give any name at the rate localhost identified by then you can specify some password let's say the ops one two three four five so what this particular query does is it would create a user with the name WP user who can connect from the local host. I will tell you what local host is. Then uh, this is the password and this is the username. Run this query and the user is created. And now it is time that I have to give permission to this user on this database. The user must have permission to connect to the database insert some data or read some data i want the user to have all the permission to this database there is a query to do that grant all privileges on then you specify the name of the database dot star that means every table within the database is given permission to whom you want to give permission to this guy this user that you previously created so what this particular query does is all privileges all or in other words all permission to read data and write data into this database is given to this user so execute this query and you are done you created a database you created a user and password and the user is given all the permission to the database so what it means is from now anyone want to connect to this database they should first connect to the database using this username and this password and uh, and then the database host name which in our case is localhost so i will tell you where this localhost come from right i will explain that where this localhost come from so now I am done with my SQL and type the command cute then now you will come out of the command line you are back to the Linux command line so you are done creating the database okay all right so your database is ready so let me explain it quickly um, what is localhost I mentioned uh, some query right uh, while creating the user I mentioned the username at the rate localhost right every time I mentioned that user I mentioned it WP user at the rate localhost so I will explain why did I use that term localhost and the simple meaning of localhost keyword is localhost means the same machine localhost has a simple meaning in networking it means the same machine so from my laptop i try to connect to localhost i am connecting to my laptop itself from the aws server i try to connect to localhost i am actually connecting to the 
AWS server itself. Localhost has only one meaning when it comes to networking. It means the same machine. So if you want to connect to the same machine you are on, you don't have to use the IP address. Yes, IP address will also work, but you don't have to. You can simply use the term localhost. It is a proper networking term that will work. So, I mean, think about this from putty, you want to connect to your AWS machine. Right, you have to use the IP address of the AWS machine. That is how you connect to the AWS machine. Or from your home, from your laptop, you want to connect to the mobile or from mobile, you want to connect to the laptop. You want to know the IP address of the laptop if you want to connect to it. But if you want to connect from your laptop to your laptop, you don't have to use any IP. IP address will also work, but better you can use localhost. Localhost is a global networking table that you can use for internal communication. So why did I use localhost while creating the database? Let me explain that quickly. So I have my AWS machine and this is this is my AWS machine and inside the same machine I have downloaded vectors files, the web application right uh, that would contain you no know, uh, PHP and whatever right the WordPress web application is downloaded in my in my AWS machine and then I created a MySQL database inside my the same machine. And while creating the database, I also created a username and password to make sure that only authenticated people will connect. So WordPress want to connect to MySQL and remember both WordPress and MySQL since they reside on the same machine, we use localhost for communication. You tell database the WordPress is in the localhost. You tell WordPress that database is in the localhost. That we have to. Right now, we told MySQL that the user WordPress, I mean, whichever user that you created in MySQL, he is going to sit within the machine. That's why I use the term localhost. Localhost has only one meaning same machine it is as simple as that so that is why i used that syntax while creating the user and i'm indirectly indicating that this user sit within the same machine right from vectors this user is going to connect to database where is vectors in localhost so that's what it means okay so now I have all the information I need to connect to the database. What are the information? The name of the database, it is WPDB. Name of the user and the host. And host is local host, same machine. Username is this, password is this. So I will give this information to WordPress. Now I am going to tell WordPress how to connect to database, right? I, I go ahead and tell WordPress that the name of the database that you want to connect is WPDB. This is that database. WordPress want to know the name of the database. That's why I'm doing this. WPDB. Then WP user is the username. And WP password, right? I mean, the password, whatever it in our case, it's DevOps12345. That we created and then the host name is localhost so i am going to give this information to my vectors then vectors know how to connect to my sql read data from it or write data into it and i told you web application in real time when these programs get executed inside the vectors they connect to the database read data or write data my responsibility was to create this database right this is the database that i created and that was my only responsibility i wanted to create this database and after that i want my vectors 
to connect to this database. So I give all the credentials to WordPress. Make sense? So that is exactly what I am doing. Go to this file. WordPress is downloaded. Oops, sorry, I got disconnected again. Okay, uh, take a short break of five minutes, right? Uh, probably we are learning too much things, so it's uh, good to take a break. Uh, take a break of five minutes. We will continue after the break, okay? Five minutes break.
Okay, uh, so uh, welcome back. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, tell vectors how to connect to database, right? I want this information to be given to address. What is the IP address of a database and its local host? Then what is the name of the database, username and password? So go to the vectors folder and type the ls command. Now you can see there is one file with the name wp-config-sample.php. You will have to rename this file to wp-config.php because this is the particular file in php in vectors you have to write the database credentials this is the file vectors will read the data from database credentials are always looked inside this file so this is the file where you should provide the database credentials i'm going to open the file on a nano editor and inside that i would specify the database name which in our case is WPDB. And then I mentioned the username. What is the username in our case? Whatever user that we created, it's WP user. And then you mentioned the password, or whatever password that we have created. It's DevOps12345. And over here, I mentioned the local host. So these are the four lines in the wp-config.php file that we modify that tells vectors these are the credentials it can use to connect to database now vectors know how to connect to the database make sense now save this file and you are done you are done with the database part you told vectors how to connect to database but you are not completely done yet. Okay, great. So now your machine is ready. Your vectors, now it know how to connect to database. So you are good at that part. You downloaded vectors you created a database then you told vectors how to connect to this database right all these things are done what's the next thing next thing i want this vectors to be served to the people sorry anyone in the world who browse for the public IP of your AWS machine, assume this is someone on the internet, he opened his browser and he browsed for IP address of your AWS machine. What would happen then? Your laptop will, you know, whoever's laptop it is, it will connect to your AWS machine because they browsed for the public IP of your AWS machine and their request will come here. And what now your AWS machine is supposed to do? It should serve this WordPress web application to, to the browser. That's what you have to do. Anyone connect on your AWS machine, they should see the WordPress web application, a good looking website printed on their browser. And how that can happen? So to do that, you need some software installed inside the machine, which we call, you, know, you can call it a web server software. So what you need to do is you need to install a software.
inside the AWS machine. And what this software actually does is, it will listen for any connection that are coming from the browser. Okay, let me draw a different picture here. Yeah, assume, assume this is, you know, this is some kind of software that has to be installed inside your AWS machine. And what this software does is it will send, listen for any connection coming from the browser on the server. It will listen here on some selected port. And any browser in the world connect to the AWS machine. This software will get that information. It will establish the connection with the browser and it will take the WordPress files. It will take the WordPress files. and send it to the browser. So basically you need a middleman, a middleman who sits somewhere and who will serve the application to the browser who requested for the application. And we call this a web server software. This is called a web server software and you need a web server software to serve your web application to the browser all over the world whoever connects to your aws machine the web server will listen to them and the web server will connect to them so that is exactly what this web server software will do and it directly establishes connection with the browser and then serve the wordpress application to them that's what it will do is like a middleman so there are different different web server software available today that can do this job there is apache there is nginx there is ias and we are going to use apache as our web server there is a software called apache if you install it then you know it can act as a web server so I'm going to install Apache inside the AWS machine. Then I will configure that as my web server. That is the plan. So let me do this. Inside the AWS machine, I'm going to install Apache web server. That is also a free software. Ah, sucks. One second. All right, so uh, I am inside the machine now <clears throat> and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install Apache web server. So what you will do, you will search in Google. What is the package name for Apache, right? Is that what you will do? You'll search in Google Apache Ubuntu package. You want to know the package name. And once you know the package name, which is Apache 2, you will use apt get to install it. So go to your go to your machine, run the command apt get update first, and then you will run 
able to get installed a password too. So you install the web server. You install the web server Apache. Apache is installed and now it is time to start the Apache service. The command is service Apache to start. So what Apache does once you started or once Apache service got started inside your AWS machine, what this service would actually do is you know for a time being forget about vectors just think only about apache so web server is a software now you have installed and started inside your aws machine and as soon as the service started running it will listen on port 80 of your aws machine or whichever server the software is running it listen on port 80 and port 80 is the standard port every browser would be connecting to and that is a standard every browser sir, you browse for google.com your browser connects to port 80 of the google.com server you browse for facebook.com your browser connects to port 80 of facebook.com server this is the way how a browser works so uh, a web server generally listen on the same port so that it can get to know any new connection come from the browser the web server can get to know and then there is a folder where you can keep your web application and web server will take the files from that folder and give it to the browser that is a simple thing that a web server will do and that is exactly what uh, i want my apache to do by default the folder is wwwhtml the folder that apache will serve to the people it is wwwhtml so what i am going to do now is i'm going to <coughs> take a look on my machine and as i told you by default the folder is war wwhtml and if you go inside the war wwhtml folder you will find there is a file called index.html so you install apache this file will be automatically created and by default this is the file apache will be serving to the people anyone in the world who browse for the ip address of the aws machine this is the file apache will serve them just to clarify by default this is the folder apache consider to be the website files are located so right now vectors is located somewhere else not in this folder we will copy vectors files in this folder later right now this is the file that is located in that folder and apache will be serving this file to the people anyone browse for the public ip of my aws machine it is not just me anyone in the world can browse it it's a public ip so let's try that to clarify my aws machine has a public ip where i can find that public ip in my aws console i go to my aws console i will get the public ip and i can share this public ip with anyone in the world i can send it to you you can also browse it so your browser from your laptop will connect to my aws machine on port 80 then what my apache does is apache listen on that particular port 80 it will see the connection coming from your browser then it will go to the folder war ww html and it will locate this file index.html in there and that file will be given to the browser and you would see in the browser it will display that index.html file but there is one problem that you need to solve before that not anyone in the world can connect to port 80 by default aws right uh, my machine is a aws machine and aws don't allow port 80 connections by default if you want anyone to connect to your machine on port 80 first aws must allow that so you have to open the port 80 in the aws security group 
i will show you how to do that this must be done otherwise any browser in the world try to connect to my aws machine aws will stop them i should explicitly open the port 80 in the aws console uh, in security group let me show you how to do that you can make a note because you need to do this from your side also so go to your aws account <coughs> sorry go to your aws account and this is where you can find the public ip anyone in the world can browse this ip on their browser and they will see the page but uh, first of all i should make sure that port 80 is open to connect so i will show you how to do that you will just need to select the machine and down here you would find something called security group it's not there i think you have to click on the security tab over here after selecting the machine click on the security tab over here and scroll down you can see the security group so click on this security group click here in the security group and inbound rule which is uh, already available here click on edit inbound rules click on this edit button edit inbound rules click on add rule and select http automatically the port number will appear here select everywhere from the drop down and what that means is anyone in the world from anywhere can connect to port 80 so i am allowing or aws is now allowing anyone in the world to connect to my aws machine on port 80 this is what you must do and from now anyone in the world i can send you my public ip you can also try to browse it when you browse it you will see when you browse it you will see let me send you that ip you will see the content of the index.html file try to browse it that's what i am going to do yes uh, i am browsing from my macbook and i am in bangalore the machine is in the us so from my browser connected to this ip which is nothing but my aws machine i already installed apache inside that machine that machine is taking this file uh, this is the content of index.html file it is giving me that page from the www html folder for you you will also get the same page if you browse for my aws machines ip so is it clear how apache works apache will listen to the browser connections coming to the server on port 80 and anyone in the world browse for the public ip of my aws machine the browser will connect to my aws machine on port 80 apache listen to that port 80 and apache will take the index.html file from the war ww html folder and give it back to the browser and now in my browser i can see a good looking page right that is where <coughs> when i can see a good looking page this is the page right all good all right so we have 10 minutes more so let us complete this topic <coughs> so what would be our next step you know that what ww html is the folder where apache will be serving the content from right it is this folder what ww html 
So currently it is the index.html file that is located in there. And I will copy all my WordPress files to this location. This is where I want my WordPress files to be located in the war wwhtml folder because that is the folder apache will be serving to the people so what i will do is i will copy the wordpress files from slash to slash wordpress folder all the files i will copy into this location right currently it is index.html. I'm going to delete that index.html file. Now there are no content in www.html. What I will do is I will probably move everything using the mv command. I move everything from the slash root slash wordpress folder into the current location that is www.html. So run this command. What happens is all the files, star means all, all files from the wordpress folder now get copied into the war ww html folder you type the ls command you can see war ww html now how the wordpress content perfect well and good so what will happen if people browse for the website now will i see a wordpress page this index.html i deleted from war ww html now i put vectors files in the war ww html so what happens if i refresh the page actually i am supposed to see a vectors page but that is not exactly what's happening it is printing me some text right which is not exactly what i expected i was actually expecting a good looking website and this is not that so this is a php program that is now displayed on the browser so by default apache will be taking this file index.php and actually apache is supposed to execute this file and the result is what i want my printed on my browser that is a good looking website right if apache executed this file this program then it would generate all the html css you know then then i would see a good looking website but that is not what happened rather what apache did is it just took the content of the file index.php and then gave it to you on your browser it did not execute the php program actually by default apache is not capable to execute a php program and this is a error this is a problem but a legitimate problem by default apache don't have the capability to run a php program so you must install a module on top of apache a php module must be installed along with apache then only it will work and that is exactly what i am doing i'm going to install a php module on top of apache so how do you install it using apt get so i search in google php module for apache this is what i want to install so that will make apache aware about php program apache find a php program apache will execute it if apache how this module installed so i want to install this i want to know what is the ubuntu package first <coughs> the ubuntu package is lib apache to mod php this is the module that i need to install for apache to execute php program then only apache can execute php programs so let's do that i'm going to run this command apt get install apt get install lib apache to mod php basically i am installing a php module for apache now apache is capable to run the php program and after installing a module you must restart apache that is a good practice after every module installation restart apache and that is what i am going to do 
I'm going to restart Apache by running this command service Apache to restart and now you go to the browser and refresh your browser let's see what happens now great so but you are not done yet there is another error but it's a different error this time Apache successfully executed the index.php file the index.php file that was available in the war ww html folder apache had executed this file and the result is what that is displayed but while executing this file there was some error and that is why your browser is displaying another error it says you know i know this error right your php installation appears to be missing mysql extension uh, so currently PHP is installed on your AWS machine. Great. But PHP is not capable to connect to a MySQL database yet. To connect to MySQL database, you need a MySQL module to be installed on top of PHP. And if that module is not there, you would get this error. If you search this error in Google, you will get the right answer. Right. Generally, you know, that is the practice you will follow normally but to troubleshoot yourself. So in my case, I know I want my SQL module to be installed on top of PHP. So I search in Google my SQL module for PHP and what is the Ubuntu package. So I will get the exact package name. The package name is PHP my SQL and let me install that and then restart apache so first of all let me install the module and then after that after it installed i will restart apache and then i should be good let's take a look i'm going to restart apache and now take a look at the website awesome Again, this is not the website yet. You know, initially there are some data to be returned to the database. WordPress want to write some data into the database. You know, you should provide a name for your website. My personal blog. This is the name I want to give. And then you can specify some username and password. This is the username and password. You can log in onto your website. Then you know, enter your email ID, whatever. Click install WordPress. This is a one-time action and that's it now your WordPress is ready anyone in the world now they browse for your ip address they will see a good looking website a customizable website you can change the theme easily without doing any coding you can log into this website with your username and password so you can log in at this url wp admin at this url you can log in with your username and password you want to change the theme you can change the theme there are many things that you can do i'm not you know it's not our concern and even my intention was not to teach you wordpress my intention is was to give you a good idea about how a web application work okay So, uh, uh, this is a quick question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, we uh, we created a database in the MySQL, right? But we never created tables and all. Vectors does that. So, I didn't bother because Vectors will do whatever is necessary <laughs> when you browse it for the first time. So, yeah. Okay. So does, it, does it create everything automatically? Uh, it did. It already how when I browsed for the first time then I when I clicked on you know I ended my uh, website name username password and my email ID and click on install WordPress on the browser when I did that at that time itself everything got configured in the database WordPress wrote or necessary data in the database so you don't generally modify the database directly table creation or data insertion data reading everything takes place
and that would be the responsibilities of a developer right and uh, they develop the program in such a way that it just works right for the user they don't care they, they just click some button they want to change the theme they go here and click on change theme button and the theme is changed so right uh, that's what they will do users will do the developer have done it right so now anybody browse for your website you know the website will now look different it has a different theme right it looks different somebody click on this hello world it will open that page and somebody click on sample page it will go to that page right if they click on somewhere something will happen so the developer takes care of all those things i mean what need to happen if somebody click this button what change should happen at the database level so those things as are the responsibility of the vendors or your developers if it is your web application in your company it is your developer who will who will do such kind of coding and programming not your concern but yeah there is a associated database to store your data all right so now let me talk about <coughs> what we learned right i give you a summary of what we learned i i will take 5 minutes okay sorry so let's talk about what are the components to a web application there are server component that we have set up on the aws server and there are client components that we have set up on the browser i mean right there has to be a browser and there has to be a server and what are the server components what are the server components so let me write that down forget about wordpress actually my intention was not to teach you wordpress my intention was to give you an idea about web application so the server component it has a web application and what all things a web application would contain it would contain mainly static content and dynamic content what is mean by static content html file images style sheets right looks and feel in short those are the static content and how about the dynamic content what about the dynamic content the php programs which are associated with the database right uh it fetch some data from the database it writes some data into the database so some content that you see in the browser as are fetched from the database right using some kind of program so these programs belong to the dynamic content the, the program get executed it generate the necessary data to be printed on the browser so in in case of vectors you have php programs then you have the dependencies right all those things comes under dynamic content what else do you need you need a web server you need a web server in our case we used apache the web server will be listening to the browser or listening to the client that is the right time to use uh, just like browser there are other type of http client as well so apache will listen to the http client in our case the browser and uh, you know any request is coming it will take the request and then it will serve the web application to them so you need a web server and the web server must be installed with proper settings so you want to serve a php application php module should be available on the apache web server or if you want to execute execute a go application uh, uh, apache must have necessary module for go like that or if it is python there should be some module requirement for python and then 
wet press has some requirement wet press um, uh, mysql module itself is a dependency of wet press so you wanted to install the mysql module on top of php that must be done and there must be a database right we already created a database and to that database you are WordPress connected to so this is the case of any application WordPress or any other this is the case there must be a database database can be located in the same machine or database can be located in a different machine if it is different machines you will use IP address in instead of local host you would put the IP address of this database if it is different machine right every machine get an IP in AWS you create a machine it has an IP so if it's a different machine you create the database you would specify the IP address. that's how it will communicate and then on the client side what are the things there is a browser that is capable to display the HTML file uh, style sheets and images whatever it can be Firefox, it can be Google Chrome, or it can be some command line browser or some command line clients. There are many HTTP clients. Whoever connects to the server on port 80 is a client. And inside this client, some program get executed within the client itself. Some JavaScript, all browser in the world are capable to execute JavaScript. JavaScript is a programming language not java it's different javascript is different javascript is used by browsers so some execution takes place within the browser itself so the server would create some javascript first time when your serve browser browsed for a website server would send some javascript to the browser and some executions happens within the browser itself using these kind of javascript if i tell you one example you open facebook.com you open facebook.com and then a lot of data get cached within your browser and you browse facebook.com again some javascript get executed inside your browser which would take the data from the cache and display remaining it will connect to the server and get it so uh, browser can also do the executions it is not only the server that can do the execution browser can also do some kind of execution using some javascript so there has to be a server there has to be a client there has to be a web application with static and dynamic content and there has to be a web server that can serve the web application to people and it must depend on different different external module uh, PS module and MySQL module in our case and there should be proper communication that should happen between the application and the database so all these things you need for a web application to work properly WordPress is written in PSP some other web application could be written in a different programming language that's absolutely fine but these are the basic component of a web application that you will see in any web applications there will be web server sometimes it is apache or sometimes it can be nginx or sometimes it can be ias doesn't matter there has to be a web server a capable web server that can serve the web application the mysql database can be it can be mysql or it can be mssql or it can be an oracle database or it can be postgresql different database technologies there has to be a database to store the data there has to be a client there has to be a server so these are all the components of a proper web application this is what i want you to understand and we use the traditional approach for installing the software tomorrow we will see a more enhanced approach a containerized approach using docker we will achieve the same thing uh, till now we haven't talked about docker or containerization and that is what we are going to discuss tomorrow and what difference it will make if you want to manage the same setup using docker right we will we are going to start with docker from tomorrow tomorrow you have a class at the same time the class will continue for 
two to two and half hours so please come prepared we start with docker from tomorrow so any questions anyone please go ahead uh, uh, basil i'm feeling like um, might be my prospective it's a very tedious process whatever we discussed as of now to prepare the website from the uh, linux mission is it same process we need to follow or uh, there could be any other options for us mm, this is the uh, what we did is we set it up from the scratch yes there are other approaches also uh, one of them like i said is using docker yeah, might be because I am from the uh, uh, testing background, so might be I am feeling it could be tedious, but the others might not feel the same thing. But I am thinking it it is a little tedious process. Uh, what do you mean by tedious? I'm sorry. The process, whatever we discussed, right? We need to get the um, database, and we need to. Uh, uh, get the web server details in the Linux mission, all, all these things. Okay. That's what I am thinking. It means from understanding point of view, uh, I am I am telling uh, basically. Right. Uh, so the the only intention was to get a clear idea about uh, what are the different components of a web application. That was the okay. whole point why we are discussing all these things what are the different components of a web application and how you will put them all together and we took a simple use case only one use case there are actually 100 use cases out there uh, and uh, these are a, a high level approach and uh, for all web applications these are different components so you might you know notice that yeah this is not a topic for from the testing domain it's, it's completely a new topic uh, it's uh, so uh, when you test an application you don't really bother about all these things or when you generally work inside a company you have a web application and you have a specific responsibility to manage so uh, in our case it was an all overview a devops engineer want to know the architecture of a software uh, whatever language it is written in it doesn't matter or uh, it doesn't matter what sorry it, it doesn't matter uh, what are the test cases you are using what are the different types of automation that happens for the testing so uh, a devops engineer must have an overall picture about everything what is going on within the project and what are the different components of a project so this is just a beginning yeah uh, remember the command is w get the command is w get So anyone, any questions? I know, I mean, the topic can be a bit confusing, but uh, probably not very much. Uh, uh, Basil, uh, I got confused on uh, the PHP module. Do we need to mention the version of PHP there? No. Generally, uh, if you want a specific version, yes, <clears throat> you can do that. But uh, yeah, we didn't. Because I installed that PHP module, but still I'm getting 500 error of HTTP. 500 error. So which is the folder uh, that you are serving the files from? It is same folder, right? What HTML? Uh, that one only uh, i got uh, this error uh, after installing this php before that it was uh, giving like apache is installed on ubuntu default page 
So better uh, check the logs. Do you know how to check the logs and the var log apart? Yes, yes. I'll I'll check. I'll check. So anyone, uh, any questions? Yeah, she can see you, see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we have class, don't forget. Same time, Basil. Same thing, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hi, um, hi Basil, I, I have one quick question. Um, you said it's ideal to create a database in a different mi mission, so in that case, uh, the process would be different or we use um, same like... process. Uh, instead of local host you would use the IP address okay so that address, that address will connect to uh, the IP address of the machine instead of local host okay uh, um, okay thank you So anyone, uh, uh, all good, Shika and Shiksha, all good? Yeah, this, we just go through all the uh, classes. Yeah. Yeah. And then also today, video, starting from today, I will request all of you to watch the video one more time. Right, that's very, very important. Minali, I'm just muting you, some noise is coming. Uh, so make sure that uh, today and tomorrow also you want to watch the video one more time so even though you understand it during the class every time you watch the video something would lighten up believe me so uh, watch the video one more time it's very very important to watch it one more time today and tomorrow's also you will have to that will help a lot it will help a lot Yeah, uh, Shiksha, so uh, yeah, you need to catch up the previous videos, so do that. Hi, Basil. Yes, Ramya. Uh, uh, just I wanted to know, uh, we just need to remember the whole process or uh, all you said is to uh, just understand the uh, how a web application works uh, that I want to know. Yeah, and the most important part is this is the overview. Uh, correct. This was an actually an overview about a web application. You okay. need to understand how a web application work. What are the different components of a web application? And you definitely need the practicals. You have to set up vectors yourself and okay. make sure that you are in sync. Right. A practicals is very very important but when i explain things right in the coming classes when i explain different different things uh, to understand what i am explaining you should be clear with these concepts so that is why i am giving more importance to the architecture of the web application how it works and different components uh, practical all the practical must be done from your side setting up the vectors and uh, only when you install vectors you will understand okay why you are doing this Right. Listening to the class will not help more mm -hmm. than an extent. So make sure that you do all these things yourself. Okay. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And if you are uh, already familiar with all these things, it's a different story. But uh, I, that is not the case. I think all of you are uh, from different technology, a different background. And uh, this uh, topic, what we learn today and tomorrow, it will be very new to you. So, yeah. Basil, if we have more than one web application running on the server, so what will be displayed when you try to connect to the public IP? Uh, Apache can manage actually. <clears throat> Apache can inside Apache we didn't do that we didn't get into much settings inside Apache but Apache can uh, listen to the browser identify which website he is browsing 
for this website you can configure one folder for the other website you can configure a different folder so www.html would be serving basil.com then www.devops will be serving devops.com so inside apache you can write down configurations this website this is the folder you can find the files from for this website this is the folder so you can write that down inside the apache configuration we haven't done that yeah okay thank you yeah uh Vido, uh, can you talk to your contact person i i wish i could send it but if you can get it through the contact person that is the best thing and also send me your gmail id hotmail on help it's in google drive so that's why okay uh, i will try uh, from uh, from my side uh, to reach to them and uh, get it done as soon as possible uh, i i request both of you to try from your side also get the access ready as soon as possible and uh, yeah shiksha and uh, uh, shiga your case also the same I talk to the yeah, yeah. okay sure Red, how about you do you have access or maybe i Ranjit, Ranjit, are you there? So everyone else have access, right? Nobody here without access. Anyone who need access to portal or drive here? I don't have access yet. I don't have yeah, access to. Yeah, Ranjit, you also don't have access, right? And so uh, who is your contact person, Ranjit? Yeah shiva okay okay just talk to him and uh, you know and get it confirmed yeah uh, everyone else please watch the video one more time i will upload it in next one hour please watch it one more time it's very important see you tomorrow uh, yeah bye thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Have a good thank question you. To you. yeah thank, thank you shika uh, okay. bye Ranjit, are you are ask, asking something? Yeah. Uh, do you have any contact number or email address to reach out to you? Any questions, anything like that? Talk to Shiva. Uh, Shiva would be the right okay. person to contact and then, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, yes. I mean, there are email IDs and phone numbers. Uh, when i share the access with you you will also get access to that contacts not phone number i, I don't prefer phone number but in case of emergencies yes or if you want to call me on phone you can always uh, talk to your contact person he can put me in a conference call and make the call and otherwise we have chat in the portal we have you know we interact in the class uh, any questions you can ask during the class yeah that would be preferred communication ways all right uh, yeah see you tomorrow bye